everyone. I hope you're having a great day today. In today's video, I will be sharing to you on how I shade clothes. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. First things first, let's open a layer window down here. In here, I'll be shading the bow first. So, I'll be selecting the layer with the bow in it. Now, for the next step, we will add a new layer. And then, we will be clipping the new layer down here. Now, on the bottom right corner of your screen, click Normal. And on the Blending Mode, choose Multiply. And now, you can close the layer window. You can also adjust the color to make it darker. And now, we will start shading the edges of the bow. The brush I use here is Round Brush Particle. After you're done with that, we will open the layer window again. Next, we will be adding a new layer. Now, we will clip the newly made layer. Now, go to Normal and set the Blending Mode to Multiply. Now, lower the opacity down here to about 62%. Now, we will be shading the bow again with round brush particle. However, in this part, I highly recommend you to make the brush thicker. Also, for this part, I use much tool. As you can see, there are folds in the bow now. Don't forget to shade the bottom part of the bow also. This step, we will open the layer window. Next, we will be adding a new layer. Now, we will be clipping the new layer. And then, click normal, scroll down until you find add. Now, we will be adding the lighting on the bow. As well as a few extra shines. Same with last time, I also use much tool for this one. After you're done with that, we will open the layer window again. be merging these two layers down. It is because both layers have multiply as their blending mode. Now, to merge both layer down, we will click this button right here. And then, we will merge the add layer last. You can also make adjustments to the bow by clicking on the filter icon and then changing the color a little bit. Here, I duplicated the layer for the bow so that I can make some adjustments to the bow. This feature also works perfectly with gradients. I also use the sputtering brush for details. Okay, to start off with the next step, let's open the layer window again. I'll be shading the top right part of the scarf or whatever you call that. Now, we will be adding a new layer. As always, we will clip the layer. And then, we go to normal and set the blending mode to multiply. Using the brush round brush particle, we will start shading the edges of the scarf. After you're done with that, we will be using the smudge tool. For the brush on the smudge tool, I use airbrush triangle. In this part, I will start smudging the edges. As you can see, there are folds now, unlike before. Now, if you're done with that, you can go straight ahead on opening the layer window. Another layer. Now, we will be clipping the newly made 
layer. After you're done with the clipping, click normal. Then set the blending mode to multiply. Set the opacity down here to about 10 or 15. Now, all you have to do is make random strokes using pen fade. And I also provided you with the color palette. However, if you're done, we will open the layer window again. Now, let's merge this two layer down by clicking this merge layer button. Don't forget to merge it down all the way to the base color. After you're done with this, we click the filter icon right here. And then, we will choose here color balance. Adjust it here however you like it. I also used a similar method just like what I did on the scarf earlier. Here, like what I did on the scarf, I shade the edges first. Same thing goes for the smudging. Smudging the little parts is really, really time consuming. Last time, I also did the blue and purple strokes on this one. Doing the random strokes and filtering it happens to be one of my favorite part in editing white fabric. Now, let's shade the skirt. The method is surprisingly similar to the ones I showed you before. So first, we will add layer. After adding the new layer, we will clip it again. Then, we will go to normal. Choose multiply. Again, we will make strokes closest to the edges. Now, there's a lot to be done here because I put a lot of line art in the skirt part. For me, smudging the skirt is pretty satisfying. Even though generally it took a lot of time. On this part, the brush size also doesn't have to be the same. You can always adjust it however you like. Here, I will continue smudging some parts of the skirt. Once you're done with this, you can go ahead and open the layer window and add a new layer. As usual, we click the new layer. And then next, we click on normal. And also, set the blending mode to multiply. And then, we will lower the opacity down here. Don't forget to lower the opacity from about 10 to 15%. Now, just like what we did earlier, we make random strokes. You can also change the size of the pen fade. Now, when you're done with this, you can go ahead and click that filter button. Once you're on filter, you select color balance. Adjust the color on however you like it. In this cloth shading, I still have unshaded parts. So, I'll change it using the same method as I showed you before. If you're done with the edits, you can also add some details using the sputtering brush. So I guess that's pretty much all about this cloth shading tutorial today. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope the tutorial helps you. Please subscribe, like, and share. It might be a little thing to you, but it means the world to me. As for now, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.